Black Boot. Yeah, the, the name the name came from the my new ocean naming uh, the scheme, starting with the Atlantic. So the, after the Atlantic, I needed something bigger, which is Pacific. And unfortunately, I ran out of oceans uh, to use. So it's my flagship. Uh, if yeah, if we can use the word flagship for the ocean, yes, that's the flagship. Our previous our our. our uh, official flagship until yesterday, so to speak, was our Golden Gate duck. The Golden Gate was a, uh, was a culmination and, you know, a, a, a peak of what we thought is possible to do with the sound. Uh, however, after three years came time where we thought that we could outdo um, the, the Golden Gate and build a new flagship. So I didn't want it just to make it more pretty or just to make it slightly different or slightly more expensive. I wanted to really verifiably, undeniably to beat every feature you could have on the Golden Gate. I mean sound feature mainly, mainly sound, not only convenience of production or convenience of use. Therefore, we had to break, break the Golden Gate into the building blocks and redo every building block of the of the duck in a way that will be superior and verifiable in a blind listening test. So every element of the of such device, which would be the power supply, the high voltage supply, the tube scheme, the digital conversion scheme, the volume management system, and the chassis, had to be individually on their own better than anything we've ever done before. I couldn't take a risk that the new product is a side. Is a, is a side step and not a leap forward. Mm. I needed a leap. We, we knew they're going to be compared to everything people own and we could not take a risk mm. of being equal or, or lesser. <laughs> The key, the key to our, our top range of DAX, starting from Light 7, Big 7, Golden Gate, Atlantic, Pacific, all of them have one thing in common. They are using directly heated triodes, called DHTs. The DHT, in my opinion, is the key to the superior sound that surpasses just the tube sound, the little Noval or Octal tube sound. So to surpass that, you don't you don't, don't buy more expensive novels. You go for DHT, and that's that's a leap. That's an abysmal difference that nobody can really cover with or mask with any other investments el elsewhere. So once we establish that DHT is the key to a special lapisator sound, we gave people possibility to use different tubes because it is for us it's relatively easy to create a power supply that can accommodate all tubes. So starting with the oldest tube in the world, the first tube ever made, the 101D from 1914, so it is 103 years old. And then 45, 245, 345, 2A3, 300B, PX4, PX25, 242, all these tubes can be used in our ducts. So that gives people possibility of rolling tubes. That's the term I just learned, rolling tubes. So people change tubes. And audiophiles are by nature neurotic. They are neurotic about their sound and their system. And, and the, the neurotic squared audiophiles are those who roll tubes and look for the sound even not only for the best for them, but the best for the particular song they want to listen or, or tune or, or, or album. And uh, they collect tubes and they have drawers full of very expensive uh, new old stock tubes that they want to try and share the information on the net. So we very strongly support this culture. This culture is our bread and butter, so to speak. And we encourage people to buy different tubes and borrow and beg and steal from their friends and buddies and share the information which they like the best. So Pacific naturally had to use all of them. And unlike in our previous models, in Pacific we really precisely target the, the voltage of filaments. So they are not within a plus minus 5% or 10% tolerance, which is still fine, it's really okay. But here we managed to make it 1% tolerance for heaters. So every every tube you can find, you can you can adjust your heaters. And so that gives the best, best sound, best longevity of tubes and best performance.
conversion is, uh, of course, the key of what we do. We are Lapis Dei Pro. We, we are the conversion people. So this is what we this is what we do for a living. Uh, so basically, it comes down to testing existing chips. B before starting Lapisator, we have tested every existing chip on the planet in controlled environment, in in apple to apple comparable uh, conditions, and we were looking for a particular sound that I enjoy. So I was looking for my sound, and I isolated or uh, I found a bunch of chips that I liked, and then used them alternating or changing models, uh, etc. Now. The last, the last decision is already five years old, the last of my decisions. I thought that I, I'm done with chips, but new chips come on board and uh, some manufacturers still make new models. Therefore, I'm able to get these, these new prototypes because chip manufacturers fortunately recognize Lampisator as, a, as an inf influential early adopter. So we receive chips before they are even released or, or like beta testers. And we found the chip that totally blew me away. Uh, I was floored. I was on my knees. I, I, I had tears in my eyes. I thought, this is the chip I was dreaming about, and I never thought it's possible. The chip that does it all. DSD, PCM, uh, good muting, all file formats, all switching, all automatic recognition. It's, it's intuitive. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. And, uh, and we, we managed to get that uh, chip for the Rocky Mountain show like one week before uh, releasing the Pacific Duck. So we got the first official reel for assembly. So we, have, we are the earliest user of the chip in the world and hopefully for another year nobody can catch up because it takes a year to implement the chip properly. Is it a secret what the chip is? Yeah, it's a secret but uh, like who cares as long as it's good. Yeah. Uh, do you really need to know what, what injection system you have in your car? As long as it drives, I don't think it's necessary. So it's a good chip. And um, I know for a fact, from the fact that we got them as the first early samples, that, that nobody in the world uses the chip. And I'm, 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 I'm just crazy about it. People coming out of this room, the first thing they say, we know Lumpy Sound, but this is so much cleaner. This is so transparent, so neutral. It's, it's like it does it all without any downsides. Um, so we have given up R2R for this model. There will be no R2R discrete because the R2R R discrete is fantastic, it's beautiful, but it doesn't go as far as this. This is, this is in, in, in another league. It's creating a new, uh, it's creating a new product and uh, stratification. R2R R was my, um, my, best, uh, my best conversion system to date. And R2R R has a lot of nostalgic sound from the TDA 1541, the early chips from Philips. But it, it also does more, it, it is more modern, it, it's more versatile and it has a very organic sound. Also you can modify it by software, you can, you can flush the software into the R2R that makes it makes different filters and different flavor. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the, 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 Pacific, the Pacific digital engine is so sophisticated and yet so beautiful uh, that at least it created a quality leap that uh, was so um, uh, so obvious that we, we didn't have to like think twice. Of course, uh, um, we, we had to start. The starting point was Golden Gate chassis, which was made of pure copper and it was a shiny polished copper. Uh, it was it was so gorgeous that I thought that we couldn't un outdo the Golden Gate chassis. And I thought that we don't, we, we don't want to make a, a Turbo Golden Gate or a Golden Gate uh, Mark II. We just want to make a completely new product. So I had to deviate from copper and I had very little, uh, very little options left except for solid gold. So I found the brass to be material that is easy to work with. It's relatively inexpensive and it's still a precious metal. So we are, we are talking about the object of art. I've seen a, a lot of beautiful houses uh, visiting audiophiles. They have amazing architecture. They have sculptures. They have original paintings. They have they have uh, real wood furniture made in Italy. So I thought that in this kind of environment, uh, such a beautiful object would feel at home. Therefore, therefore we, we were aiming at a at a at an artistic state of art chassis that would not be flashy, it wouldn't be vulgar, it wouldn't look like uh, you know, um, uh, a gangster's car, 
uh, it, would, it would rather look like an object of desire mm -hmm. and I wanted the looks to match the sound. So I would never allow myself to use beautiful looks without the sound to match. Otherwise, it, I would be in a different industry. I would be in the furniture industry. So we try to use a simple shape, no, no ornaments at all except the, 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 the natural shine of, of brass. So it is, it is, the brass is a, is a boring looking metal, but once you polish it, with every layer of polishing and, and every refinement of polishing, it becomes more shiny and more goldish. And in the end, in my opinion, it looks better than gold. Gold looks vulgar and ordinary compared to properly polished brass, which of course is difficult and expensive, and we have to go out of our way and visit four different working shops to get this kind of finish, but it's, I think it's totally worth it. And the time will show whether we will have a black and grey and silver version too for those who want to keep a low profile and not aggr aggravate their wives. But uh, if, if the wife sees this thing, she, will, she should say, finally, you bought something beautiful. And that's what we are aiming at. So, uh, we are trying to make this upgrade program for Golden Gate and all our ducks will have the upgrade program. So we had to make a intelligent price decisions concerning switching from Golden Gate and then trading in and all the costs and then getting the Pacific. So it is priced slightly above Golden Gate, uh, enough to make the difference, uh, starting at 22,000 euro and ending at 29,000 euro. So in the worst case scenario, it's at 29,000 euro, and then you trade in your old duck, so the difference to pay is roughly 10,000. Mm -hmm. So this, this is this is where we where we are, and it, it turned out to be a successful uh, strategy because uh, we got so many orders in the first month that it proves that the, the, the existing users are happily ready to leap and, and, and take the 10,000 step into this machine. Mm -hmm. Because they're starting with single-ended and no, no frills, just plain uh, duck, and then they go to balanced, and then they go to volume control, and then they go to volume control and in built-in preamp, and all the bells and whistles and, and remote control. So, by adding the sophistication, we have to charge more. We cannot. It's th th these devices are so costly to make and labor-consuming that we cannot just throw everything in, saying, "Okay, for this price, you get everything." Because then, it, then some people would be overpaying uh, even up to 8,000 euros for something they don't need, and without the without the audible benefit. Mm. So in in my book, if you pay for something, it has to sound sound better. You don't pay for looks or anything. We have to give you better sound, and then we are ready to accept your money for that.